Hello, Jeff Zwerink here, and welcome to Give and Take, the segment of our show where we explore important scientific ideas and how they relate to the truth of Christianity. Today, I'm joined by my colleague and friend, Dr. Fuzrana, and we're going to investigate or ask the question, should Christians be excited about this new COVID-19 vaccine? Fuzz, it's good to have you here today. Jeff, thanks for having me. So, like I said, it's impossible to have gone through this last year without thinking about COVID. And one of the, the mantras has been, we need to get a vaccine to, to deal with this. And I just have to say, as a Christian, I've got kind of mixed feelings about this. Uh, you know, we, clearly vaccines are good and effective, but this one's been really rushed through. And so I'd like to just kind of get your thoughts and have a discussion with you about how do we think about this incredibly well, quickly developed vaccine. Uh, what are your thoughts on how quickly this vaccine was developed? Well, you know, the, the fact that the vaccine was developed so quickly is really, I think, a testament to, I think, the resolve of private industry and the government to really work co cooperatively and, and provide sufficient resources to, again, develop the vaccine so rapidly. I mean, prior to this, I'm, I'm under the impression that the fastest that anybody's ever developed a vaccine is under four years or just under four years. So this is a real uh, incredible accomplishment. But the other thing that's real interesting is that this vaccine was developed really uh, over the span of 30 years. Uh, and in fact, when the uh, COVID-19 pandemic hit, people had already had uh, messenger RNA vaccines in small scale clinical studies for other viral pathogens like Ebola and Zika. And so all the researchers had to do was once they had the sequence for the, the virus spike protein is literally just plug it into the, into, the, into the vaccines that they had already developed. And uh, voila, within a few days, they had uh, uh, basically vaccines against COVID-19 that they very quickly progressed to animal testing and then to small scale human safety studies before they did a phase three study. So the rapid development is amazing, but it also is based on really 30 years of hard work leading up to that just right point in time when they could actually produce a specific vaccine for COVID-19. So it sounds like this vaccine is actually very different than past vaccines. Um, can you kind of give a description? What is it that is different about this compared to other vaccines that allowed it to be developed so quickly, if you will? Well, the, the fact that it's essentially um, a messenger RNA vaccine is really the key to this. Many people uh, consider these vaccines to be ideal because once you figure out in a sense how to package the RNA and deliver it to cells, then all you really need to do to tailor the vaccine to a particular viral pathogen is essentially modify the RNA sequence, which is really easy to do. Uh, and you would just modify that sequence based on a knowledge of the particular viral protein that you want to uh, uh, use as the, 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 the trigger to, for the immune system so that it acquires uh, immunity against that particular pathogen. So, so, you know, if you go back to other vaccines, polio, mumps, rubella, those sorts of things, it really does seem like there's an aspect to where they were starting from scratch each time, whereas it seems like this is not, you, you really can't say that this vaccine was developed within a year, that it's been developed over a much longer period of time and it was given specificity that is, to this virus within the last year. Would that be an accurate way to characterize it? Yeah, that's a really good way to characterize it. So if it's developed very quickly, how do, or, or if, it, if, if at least the specificity was developed quickly over the last year, how do we know this is safe for humans to take? I mean, we've done a little bit of work, but normally we take much longer for these trials. So is this something we can safely take? I, I think so, yes, because as over the span of th you know, three decades, as these types of vaccines were being developed, uh, of course, the, an eye for safety was always very much part of that process of development. And again, there were uh, small scale safety studies done for messenger RNA vir uh, vaccines for uh, targeting other viruses, um, you know, even before this particular vaccine was progressed, you know, into clinicals. Uh, there was animal testing done on uh, messenger RNA vaccines, again, targeting different pathogens. It was done on uh, this particular, for these particular vaccines. 
There were safety testing done before it progressed to phase three uh, clinical studies. And there were two phase three studies, one done by Pfizer BioNTech, one done by Moderna, where there were 75,000 people that received uh, the vaccine, or at least that were part of the clinical study, about 40,000 received the vaccine. And from that, they could assess both effectiveness and the safety of the vaccine to the point where they saw no safety issues and saw 90% effectiveness. And so there was really no reason not to approve it for emergency use, given that we're in the midst of a pandemic. So, so it does sound like there's really a lot of effort that has been gone, done and a lot of uh, time has been invested to ensure this is uh, good and safe for humans to use. Uh, it does also seem that with any sort of vaccine, there is a risk. And obviously the fact that this is new brings some level of risk. How would you assess the risk of this vaccine compared to other vaccines that we have available? Well, I mean, at this point, it's kind of hard to assess the risk uh, just because again, uh, we, we've, as, as we are uh, talking now, there have been 35 million doses of the vaccine that have been administered to people. And we know that the primary risk of, with these vaccines it would be uh, anaphylactic shock for people that tend to have either autoimmune disorders or tend to respond strongly have, with strong allergic reactions to things in the environment and what have you. And we know now that it's about one in 100,000 people that will undergo anaphylactic shock, which is a serious thing. But that in, broad, in a broad sense indicates that it's really a, a very safe vaccine because again, the severe reactions are extremely rare, and it, but they do indeed happen. So, you know, we're continuing to assess the, the safety of these vaccines, you know, and, and, uh, and the people that are receiving the vaccines are being monitored as they are actually being deployed. So the more vaccines that are delivered, I think the better understanding we're going to have of the safety profile. But right now, there's no reason to think that these vaccines are unsafe. I know we don't have the studies to show, but I'm just kind of curious, what is your assessment of potential long-term effects that might be? Do you expect that that's gonna be there or is anything, or do you have any worry about that? Anything more than just the, the standard risk of any time something new comes out? Yeah, I, I, at this point in time, I don't see any reason to think that there could be any kind of really long-term effects from you know, the, the, these vaccines. It's again, hard to know you know, you, you, you really have to let things play out. But I think in terms of kind of the risk assessment, you know, if because we are in the midst of a pandemic, we don't really have the luxury of, of doing those kind of studies, uh, particularly again, when there's absolutely no reason to, to think that these vaccines are unsafe. And given that they are 90% effective against, you know, the, the, against the SARS-2 coronavirus, you know, when it comes to COVID-19 and the viruses, there is just a whole lot of information out there. And some of it's bad and some of it's good. And part of our job as Christians is to be passionate about finding the truth. I've enjoyed very much talking with Dr. Fazrana here today to just draw on his expertise as a biochemist to know how these vaccines work, what sort of safety can we expect out of them, and to see whether they're a good thing or not. And it really does seem like it's a good thing that God has given us these vaccines. You know, I would encourage you to go to reasons.org and check out Dr. Rana's latest blog on this issue. It's called The COVID-19 Vaccines and God's Providence. One of the things he does in there is make a strong case that God has equipped us, provided his providence so that we can deal with just a time as this, where this vaccine is on the forefront. Go check it out. Be better equipped to spread God's good news to those he brings across your path.